Energy corporations will have precise data on your daily routines, when you wash your clothes, when you watch TV. So we have to have methods to do that. Once we have that security code, we can do pretty much anything that the utilities can do. I say that's absolutely false. Uh, the question to ask them is, what is the evidence that smart meters are safe? And with that, we're back again. Hi there, I'm Darren Howard. And I'm Robert Nisbet. We are talking about smart meters. Why? Because major media will not talk about it, but we're going to bring you the stories, the ammo, the intellectual information that you need. Why? Because we're in Kelowna and we rock. And because our local utility is going to be sold to Fortis, BC. We've got the inside skinny on that, but a guy is not going to use profanity for a change. We've got a Deke Jackson. Check it out. We'll be right back. A new form of government has gone on sale, hoping to gain a slice of the lucrative tax franchise market. Its makers claim it looks and tastes just like democracy, but has far fewer calories. Called I can't believe it's not democracy. It's made from real votes, just like normal democracy. But then the wishes of the people who voted are completely removed in a secret process known as lobbying. Lobbying works by having so much money to give politicians that the normal workings of democracy are interrupted, leading to less fatty representation for the people of the country involved. The benefits of this process are astounding. Normal democracy is large and slow and heavy, weighed down by accountability, due process, with the will of the people, honesty, care and respect for human rights and other fattening ingredients. The process is so useful, its inventors say they have a range of other products coming down the pipeline, including I can't believe it's not terrorism, or Terra Light, as they like to call it. Terra Light has none of the drawbacks of real terrorism, like dead people or explosions, but still makes people scared and willing to give up freedom and civil liberties. The American people like Terra Light so much, they've given up eating Constitution Burger and civil liberty chips, preferring instead the taste of synthetic Terra, and I can't believe it's not democracy. Oh man, telling it the way it is, Deke Jackson, I thought this was democracy. Well, why should we have democracy when we can have fascism? <laughs> we do not recognize the country that we're living in. We don't even recognize the municipality we're living in because of the incredible lack of integrity, the conflict of interest, the Fortis sale of our utility to a smart meter company. And why are we giving up more of our rights to privacy to a power company, a private corporation? <laughs> oh, no. Our rights, our privacy, our health, even the fact that they can hack into these things are what we're going to be talking about because they're smart meters, and they're going to show up on the side of your apartment building, your condo, your home, and you have no vote. That's this, right. That's messed up. And they're not creating employment either. Uh, in fact, they're creating a lack of employment and replacing usable analog technology that's far superior. This is our Smart Meter Special with Radio Free Canada. Let's run this and get right into it. Remember that little guy that used to come to your house to me measure energy usage? They'd write it down with a little notepad and then send you a bill at the end of the month. Well, that little guy is out of a job. He's been replaced with smart meters equipped with RF chips, technology that allows power companies to monitor these devices without actually ever coming to your home. So just how smart are they? Well, not only do they rapidly record information by the hour, but they can determine just what type of energy you're using. Think about that for one second. It may not seem like too much intrusion, but consider this. Energy corporations will have precise data on your daily routines, when you wash your clothes, when you watch TV, when you leave your home and when you come back. And if, another point to consider is what these companies can do with this information. Once they share it with law enforcement, it can, and believe me, it will be used against you. Cops will be able to know just what you're doing at all times in the privacy of your own home. Hey, who needs a telescreen when you have a smart meter? Secondly, these corporations can sell this information about our daily lives for data mining and advertising. It's disturbing on so many levels. Yet, 
These little surveillance units are being implemented across the country without the public's consent and in many cases without their knowledge that they're even being installed. And it's leading to an array of problems. Look guys, it may seem like you don't have a choice in this, but these meters are not mandatory yet. You don't have to subject yourself to unknown health risks or increased utility costs. You most certainly don't have to give up your privacy to private corporations. What you have to do is be bold enough to say no. Protect ourselves against drug dealers. I'm sorry, $7 billion a year pays for a lot of hackers. You want to have to deal with the drug dealers? Why don't you just legalize the stuff? <laughs> and then, you know, charge them through the roof and actually make some money off of you it. You know, but that would make too much sense, you know. <laughs> yes, there's no making sense when talking to a power company. The biggest scam on the planet has occurred in Kelowna. Former Fortis employee got it, voted in as mayor. He's my former employer. He's my former boss. Yeah. And now we're going to take the $50 million that we get from Fortis for selling our utility and invest it back into Fortis. Um, how does that work? I mean, they take the money from Fortis and put it, give it back to Fortis? That's... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to edit that out. We're going to run this clip, and I want you to think about your health, too. Oh, and really, uh, we're going to cover a couple points about Jerry Flynn, but remember, hacking your information, selling it off. Uh, you know, these smart meters don't work, and plus they're 10 times more expensive than analog. Exactly. That analog, by the way, works. Utilities have been dealing with it for years. You know, people want to figure out ways to steal electricity. My name's Don C. Weber. I work for InGuardians, and I'm a senior security analyst for them. Basically, in, in order to interact with a meter, um, we have to have the security code. So we have to have methods to do that. Once we have that security code, we can do pretty much anything that the utilities can do. So we can read the information off of it, um, what we call write to tables, which is uh, write information to it, which would change the configuration. And we can run procedures, and procedures will do things such as disconnect the meter. Um, there are many procedures, but that would just be a, an example of one. It's really hard to predict what they're going to be looking for. Uh, a good example would be to disconnect the house. You know, if they if they wanted to turn a house off, um, that uh, in fact that impacts one person. So it doesn't necessarily impact the uh, um, the stability of the grid. Uh, obviously, you know, no family wants to be turned off when they're expect not expecting to be turned off. So this type of thing is going on out there. Um, so. Criminals aren't going to advertise that they're doing this until they're starting to sell their services and until, and we're not going to hear about it until utilities are uh, open about telling us that they're starting to see these types of things out there. So there you have it, okay, uh, simply stating exactly what Jerry Flynn stated. Okay, and you can get a hold of him at Citizens for Safe Technology. That's right. And make sure that you get informed because... The data that they're bringing forward, a physician that I really respect looked at the data that they provided, and he goes, this isn't data. Yes, and of course, Health Canada adjusts the safe levels to accommodate the power companies. The Health Canada actually changed the levels that it considered safe because the power company was putting these things in. Well, you know, we can't interfere with profits. Well, of course not. Human health is not more important than profits. Are you and, kidding? Yeah, I know. And the fact that, you know, you can get hacked. The other thing, too, it's a common sense thing. An analog, you know, machine cannot be hacked. They're safe. They're cheap. They last forever. They last for 20 and 50 years. And they monitor without, you know, you can't lie to them. No. You right. can't turn it back. Plus, they employ people to go and read them. And, of course, uh, you know, Fortis, right? But the continuing scam that there is in, in Kelowna right now, this Fortis BC sale, it just blows me away. I want to cover that in a bit. Can we cover uh, this one, the confusion one? Yes? Okay. Because I think that this is kind of important. We're going to point you towards Castanet in just a second. But here's another bit for those activists who are awake. I'm David Carpenter. I'm a public health physician. I graduated from Harvard Medical School and I worked for the New York State Department of Health for 18 years 
During that period of time, I was responsible for administering a program in electromagnetic fields. I subsequently became the Dean of the School of Public Health, and uh, presently I'm a faculty member in the School of Public Health and the Director of the Institute for Health and the Environment at the University of Auburn. Thank you. And Central Maine Power says there is no reason to be concerned about smart meters. There are no health effects, and everyone who's worried about health effects of RF from smart meters or from the mesh network uh, really has nothing to be concerned about. And what do you say to that? I say that's absolutely false. Uh, the question to ask them is, what is the evidence that smart meters are safe and have no adverse health effects? And the answer to that question is that there is no such evidence. And in fact, while no one has actually done human health studies in relation to people living in homes with smart meters, we have evidence from a whole variety of other sources of radio frequency exposure that demonstrates convincingly and consistently that exposure to radio frequency radiation at elevated levels for long periods of time increases the risk of cancer, increases the damage to the nervous system, causes electrosensitivity, has adverse reproductive uh, effects, and a variety of other uh, effects on, on different organ systems. These are signs demonstrating my democratic right to say no to a microwave meter on my own. BC Hydro's smart meters have been installed in 1.74 million homes in the province. Eunice St. Clair's isn't one of them. For years, she's been fighting the official line, a smart meter for every home, whether they're wanted or not. That clear directive has been muddied considerably beginning with a statement on smart meters from Energy Minister Rich Coleman. He says over the next several months, Hydro will work with customers to help them understand the benefits of the new meters and that during this time, Hydro will not install a meter without the homeowner's consent. Yuna has a letter from her MLA supporting the minister's statement. There are about 85,000 holdouts. When we asked about the statement, Coleman's office refers us to Hydro, who says, Most of the meters have already been installed, and we think it's important to take some extra time to work with customers who still have concerns with getting a new meter. In the meantime, we will not install a new meter for these customers unless we have their permission. Health concerns have been at the forefront for smart meter opponents, but it's more than that for some. The issue is far greater than whether the risks are real or not. The issue is who controls your home? Who's in your home making the decisions as to what you will be exposed to in your home? Is it the government that decides how you will live? Or is it you, the homeowner? Do you have the sanctuary of your home? Is your home safe as you would choose it? And this is the question. The utility adds, we can't remove a smart meter once it's been installed because they're now standard operating equipment like utility poles and power lines. Also, the old meters are being recycled and are no longer available. There has been no timeline given for the plan to suspend installation while Hydro tries to convince meters. And that's the way it works around here. What do you think, brother? Well, I think that BC Hydro needs time to convince customers that smart meters are safe. Why would they have to convince them? <laughs> ah, that's the question. Keep your brains on because we've got more coming up and we've got a special on Mayor Walter Gray coming up just for you. The concept of democracy on the way. I'm Darren Howard. I'm Robert Nisbet. We're going to be right back. Hang on to your socks. It's all that in a bag of chips. Since 1971, when President Nixon took the United States off what was left of the gold standard, the world has operated under a system of money called fiat. The dollar, the pound, the euro are all government fiat currencies. Fiat is a Latin word meaning let it be so. It is the law that this government currency be money. Indeed, without that legal enforcement and the fact that we must pay taxes in this money, that dollar bill or that computer digit that represents a dollar would be pretty much meaningless. Only the government has the power to issue fiat money, but banks can create it through lending. If somebody wants to borrow $10, a bank can create it from nowhere and lend it. It can then charge interest. Banks also create money by lending against an asset, such as a house. They're given the deeds to the house, and they create the money out of nowhere and lend it. At interest, of course. But who benefits? Of course, those that have the power to issue money. Governments and banks. They haven't had to do anything productive, they just create money.